No humans are alike, we are all unique. Well, this is certainly true. All humans, except for identical twins, have unique DNA sequences which make us who we are. Genes in your DNA determine the color of your hair, your eyes, and together with environmental factors, all the other features you have. Sometimes, however, our DNA changes, and this is what we call a mutation. Mutations can occur in all cells of our body, and in dramatic cases, they can harm or kill a cell. The majority of mutations are not inherited by our offsprings, and they vanish with us. That's kind of heartwarming and nihilistic. Sometimes, however, two very specific types of cells are affected by mutations, egg cells or sperm. And in these cases, genetic changes can be passed down to future generations. Although most of these mutations can lead to genetic diseases, some might also result in superhero-like abilities. My name is Gunn Steinig and today we'll talk about five incredible human mutations. Do you know the feeling when you haven't slept your typical 7 to 9 hours and feel exhausted for the rest of the day? Or you are constantly tired regardless? Well, then you are like most other people on this planet. However, there are also a few exceptions which feel refreshed after only sleeping 4 to 5 hours. If you know a friend or a coworker who fits that description, well, then they might be a DAC2 mutant. DAC2 is a gene which is also often referred to as the Fetcher gene, named after Margaret Fetcher, who apparently slept 4 hours a night while she ran the UK. Well, this sounds quite hardcore. DAC2 helps us to regulate our biological clocks. You see, every human being has internal biological clocks, which for example tell us when we should feel sleepy and when we should be awake. And that's where DAC2 is involved. DAC2 blocks a protein, which is called orexin. Orexin normally makes us feel awake during the day. During the night, however, DAC2 is produced, which then leads to a decreased function of orexin, and then we should go to sleep. Mutations in DAC2 now decrease its ability to block orexin. What is now very interesting about DAC2 mutations is that carriers feel awake after only sleeping 4 hours. This means that they do not suffer from sleep deprivation or any other related symptoms. So, why grab a coffee when you also can have a DAC2 mutation? The next superpower on our list gives us super awesome strong bones. There is a story of a boy who was involved in a car accident. Although he should have been injured, he emerged unharmed and not a single bone was fractured. Scientists heard of this story and they started to dig deeper. And what they found was that not only this boy, but also all of his close relatives have never experienced bone fractures. As it turns out, humans can carry a mutation which make bones very dense. I guess it's the first time someone can argue that they are big bones. While some of these people are defined by having a white jar, other people might not be affected at all, meaning that they do not realize that they have strong bones. So where do we find the responsible mutation? Well, the answer lies within a gene called LRP5. LRP5 is a key player in determining your bone density. Mutations in LRP5 have already been known in humans before, but here they mostly cause different diseases, such as a form of osteoporosis. In all of these cases, signals given by LRP5 to make denser bones were interrupted or didn't work properly. This new mutation, however, improves LRP5 signaling, meaning that bones become much stronger. Before you want to try out if you have abnormally dense bones, however, I want to tell you that only a few dozen cases have been reported so far. It's certainly remarkable nevertheless. Now we come to another group of mutations which we've already covered on this channel. You might remember this video here, so now we are talking about mutants which are able to drink dairy products. These mutants are lactose tolerant, and lactose tolerance developed roughly 10,000 years ago. As the name suggests, lactose tolerance involves a protein called lactase. While well, normally all infants and children produce lactase, its production starts to diminish upon adolescence. As a consequence, lactose, a main ingredient of dairy products, cannot be digested properly anymore. What now happens is that lactose remains inside the gut until bacteria come, which start to digest these molecules. However, they do that very slowly and they also produce several gases. And this results in several symptoms, including abdominal pain, diarrhea, or bloating. 
Mutations near the lactase gene can now trigger cellular events, which then maintain the production of lactase throughout our lives. Mutations which make us lactose tolerant have been, in my opinion, one of the most important recent genetic changes in the history of humankind. You have to think that during periods of starvation, people have been in desperate need of every calorie they can get. Becoming lactose tolerant enabled people to drink and eat all kinds of different dairy products without having to face any consequences. And consequences here mean the excretion of valuable nutrients or water. Since these mutations have been so beneficial, they quickly spread and now for example over 90% of the Swedish population are lactose tolerant. So let's move on to number 4. Some people have the ability to be resistant against certain diseases such as malaria. I think we've all heard about malaria. Malaria is caused by a pathogen called Plasmodium falciparum and it's transmitted through mosquito bites. Once this parasite enters our bloodstream, it starts to infect liver cells and later red blood cells. It uses these cells to reproduce and starts to destroy them. As a result, an infected person has less and less red blood cells and start to experience symptoms like fever, chills or headache. Since malaria is a dangerous and fatal disorder, mutations which make people malaria resistant have emerged and quickly spread in regions where we find the pathogen. These mutations now mostly affect the properties of red blood cells. Through specific mutations, the shape or specific components of red blood cells are changed, making Plasmodium unable to infect them. Of course, changing the characteristics of important cells such as red blood cells can have detrimental effects. The sickle cell allele, for example, is often found in people who are malaria resistant. The term sickle cell tells us that the shape of red blood cells in these individuals is distorted. If a person now has one copy of the sickle cell allele, they are malaria resistant while not exhibiting any detrimental symptoms. If a person, however, carries two copies of the sickle cell allele, they suffer from a very severe form of sickle cell anemia. Although this disease is potentially fatal, we still find a lot of sickle cell alleles in populations where we also find plasmodium. So this tells us how dangerous malaria has been in the past. So last but not least, we come to super sprinters. Has any one of you ever wondered if some people are just naturally born to run fast? I mean, there are always some peers in sports class who seem to be naturally gifted in running. Of course, being great in sprinting also means that we have to have a lot of discipline and hard work, but sometimes also a mutation can help. This mutation occurs in a gene called ACTN3, which is important for the structure of muscles. Two different forms of this gene are often described, and as it turns out, one variation is very frequently found in elite sprinters. This version is called ACTN3 577R and it helps athletes in various ways. Having two copies of this gene variation, for example, helps to reduce the risk of injury and also post-exercise muscle damage. Well, that sounds awesome until you realize that a lot of people have two copies of the second ACTN3 form and they are much more prone to sport injuries. So I guess it's not about being clumsy anymore, we can always blame our genes. I hope that you enjoyed this video about 5 incredible human mutations. What do you think? Do you have any other specific superpower mutations which have not been covered in this episode? If so, leave a comment. Otherwise, feel free to like this video and also subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button. And with that, I'll see ya.